All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here. We're gonna take a look at some algebraic properties. And when I think properties, I always think real estate, real estate agents, what's not. Check out that algebraic property right there. That house is sweet. If my yard looked like that, I would play outside way more often. Very cool. Let's get rolling on this here. Uh, so we're gonna start off with talking about expressions. And what are expressions? I mean, we see expressions all the time, right? We got these little emojis, emoticon things. Obviously one of those is my favorite in there. Uh, but in terms of math, what are expressions? Not just happy, sad. We're gonna do mathematical phrases. Expression is just a mathematical phrase. So we have two types of expressions. Boom, you gotta know, and you're gonna have to pause to write this down, what a numeric expression is. It's just that mathematical phrase involving only numbers and operations. So just numbers, and then operations are like add, subtract, multiply, divide. Versus what's an algebraic expression? It's the same thing, but now we can add variables to it. So if you need to pause to write that down, go for it. Uh, just to give you a couple examples, let's say three plus eight, that is a numeric expression. I'm adding them, you could multiply them, you could divide them, you could subtract them. Any kind of operation to them uh, is numeric. Versus over here in algebraic expression, we may say something like x plus two is algebraic all of a sudden, or two x is even one, or two x minus three. There could be a bunch of them. You could just keep going and going and going. So we're gonna be dealing a lot with expressions and seeing if these expressions uh, are equal and whatnot, so it's important to know what the expression is. Awesome. So now that we know what expressions are, can we use them to come up with some properties? Sure. Properties we're going to use throughout, and uh, you've maybe seen these before. What is the commutative property? So the commutative property is, um, if we do addition, it's when you take two things and you add them together. A plus B. Oops, I almost wrote five, sorry. A plus B and what is that equal to? It equals to B plus A. And that may be kind of like, yeah, awesome, Mr. Brust. Uh, but it's legal, you can do it. The order doesn't matter when you're adding. Does it matter when you're multiplying? No, we can say A times B is the same thing as B times A. So it's okay to change the order. Uh, for example, if you say five plus two is the same thing as two plus five. These are both expressions that are the same, they both equal seven, so we know they're equivalent expressions, we're good to go. Doesn't work with subtraction, you can think about it, eight minus three is not three minus eight, that's not true. It's not the same thing, eight minus three is five, three minus eight is negative five, so it doesn't work for subtraction or division, only addition and multiplication. Awesome, so with that in mind, how does the commutative property uh, different than the associative property? Well, the associative property talks about who you associate with, so if I have a plus like a grouping symbol here, so it's in addition, it's a plus the group b plus c, so that means I would do them first. You can change uh, your grouping symbols here with addition. As long as it's all addition, it's cool. So it doesn't matter if I say a plus the b plus c first or the a plus b first, it's all the same answer. And the same thing with multiplication. You could have a times and say, hey, I wanna multiply the bc first, or you could say, I wanna multiply the AB first. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I always like to think about the real numbers just to make sure, like think about it. Is two plus five plus three the same thing if I change the grouping symbol and add the two plus the five first? Is that cool? Well, let's see. Uh, five plus three is eight plus the two is 10. Two plus five is seven plus the three is 10. These are equivalent expressions because they equal the same thing. We are good to go. Same thing over here, I can say, yeah, I wanna go five times three first, if it's all multiplication, or uh, you can do uh, the two times five first. And either way, you're gonna get 30 uh, for these. They both equal 30, so we are good to go. And you may be asking, well, how does that make sense? Well, sometimes it's, it's really beneficial to change the order up and things like that. So how do you tell them apart? I always, when I'm thinking about this associative property, I'm thinking about the group. It's about grouping symbols, so think of that as the group you hang out with, who do you associate with, you know, maybe uh, you're a hipster, is your group, uh, you can change your grouping, if you change the actual grouping, maybe you move over to like the jocks or uh, the emos, is emo a group, I don't even know, uh, you're changing, that's the social property, you're changing the grouping, versus commuting, uh, commutative property, you're just changing the order. All right, fantastic. Uh, so, our goal here is to use these properties to first of all, are these expressions equivalent? And if they are, you have to tell me why. So let's take a look at the first one. Now, a lot of times you'll notice in the notes we leave one or two or all of them blank. I usually like to leave the first one blank. This just makes sure you take some time to write it down 
and are really doing the notes with us, uh, just to make sure we're all on the up and up, no one's being shady out there. Uh, so if I have this right here, first of all, are these the same thing? Can you uh, change what I do here? It looks like I flopped y plus two to two plus y, is that legal? Yes, is that the commutative property or associative? That is the commutative property. Ooh, I almost spelled commutative wrong. There's an A in there. Commutative property. And this is of addition. We don't have to specify for our needs uh, addition or multiplication, uh, but it is addition if you really want to get into it. It's commutative property of addition. How about here? I change the order again. Is that commutative property? Mm, careful. No, this is not equivalent. Uh, this is not 8 minus 6 is 2 versus 6 minus 8 is negative 2. They're not equivalent. Now check it out here. Uh, so we said that, yeah, you can't do the commutative property for subtraction. Well, it looks like I'm doing it here, right? 8 minus 6 is 2. Negative 6 plus 8. Wait, they both equal 2, don't they? So this is legit. This is the commutative property. It just looks tricky because what is the commutative property of? Of a negative number. That's like saying 8 plus a negative 6. So it's legit when you do it like that. 8 plus negative 6 is the same thing as 8 minus 6. Then you can flip the order and say negative 6 plus 8. But that negative better come with it for that to, uh, to be in there. Awesome. What's going over here? Am I changing the order or am I changing the grouping? Definitely changing the grouping because it was uh, x times y, but now it's 4 times x. So if I change the grouping, that is the associative property. Boom. Um, am I changing order or grouping? It looks like it was x plus 2 was the group, and now it's 5 plus x. So it's associative, and it's all legal. It's all addition, so I'm all cool here. And then I've got a plus b b times c. So did I change the grouping? No, it's the same thing. Aha, uh -huh. I moved the group. Tricky, Mr. Bruss, that one's kind of tricky. But it's the commutative property. You just moved, you changed the order, you didn't actually change the grouping. So really look at those grouping symbols anytime you see them uh, that, to see if it's associative or not. Awesome, so we're pretty good on properties there, hopefully. Can you use them in proof? So we're gonna have some mathematical proofs to say, hey, is the quantity x times y times z equal to the quantity z times y times x. Well, it is. I'm not going to prove something that's not true. Uh, so it's going to be true. So you got that going on. So the first thing you'll notice in these proofs are uh, I'm going to write the left side of this, and it's the given. You, I gave you this. I'm giving you this is equal to this, and you're going to show me the steps to get there. So basically, you're going to list all the properties uh, that I did to get there. So I give you this, and I'm going to write given for you. How do I know that this turns into this? So did I change my grouping? X times Y, it's still X times Y. No, I just changed the order. So there's your commutative property. Commutative property, boom. And um, now what happened? Now what did I do here? Inside there, the XY turned to YX. Is that legal? Sure, I changed the, uh, the order again. So it's actually another commutative property. Woo! So I'm changing the order. It doesn't matter who you multiply first. That's cool. So two commutative properties. Then what I do here, it was yx, now it's zy. So anytime you change the grouping, now it's who do they associate with. So it's the associative, I can't talk, associative, associative property. Fantastic. Very nice. So that's it. Uh, pause the next one and try it. See how you do on this second proof over here. All right. So hopefully you got associative property followed by the commutative property. Uh, you change the grouping symbol, so boom, it's got to be the associative property there. I like these because they're 50-50 chance, right, so far. <laughs> Not later on, though. All right, so here's one more property, and this is the big dog. This is the one we use all the time. It is the distributive property, and it says if you have A times a quantity, B plus C, you can distribute it and say A times the B plus A times the C. So you're actually distributing this A to both of them. So it's multiplication, you're going to distribute to both, and it's the same thing. Don't believe me? Let's do one over here. Uh, if, if I didn't know the distributive property in my mind, I'd say 2 plus 3 is 5, right? So I'd say 4 times 5, 4 times 5 is 20. But the distributive property says, I got this numeric expression here, using a little vocab, uh, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12. What is that? That is t 80. How about 20? <laughs> Uh, 4 times 3 is 12, that is 20. So I got the same thing. So this distributive property is true. Turns out this comes up all the time. So we gotta get really, really good at this. So if I have four times this quantity, I can't add two x plus three. They're not like terms, so I can't add them. Over here I could have. I don't have any options, but I can distribute. And I'm gonna distribute this. So four times two x, you could write this out. Four times two x plus four times three 
if you wanted to, if you prefer to do this one in your head, that's totally cool. Um, you can just go straight to the 8x plus 12. That is it. You can't combine like terms, you're done and done. So we're gonna have an algebraic expression and end in an algebraic expression. The key to this distributive property is this bad boy here. This is a negative four, you must distribute the negative sign. Do not forget that negative and then you're good to go. You can't add 2x plus 3y, but I can distribute and say it's negative 8x minus 12y. So distribute that negative, negative 4 times a positive 3y is negative 12y. If you distribute that negative, you are golden. Let's bring the pain here. And again, the first one I left blank, you're going to have to write this one down. Um, and we're going to do the first two together, and then the rest I'm going to have you try. Let's just get an idea of what we're looking at here. This is the bulk of the practice. This is the master check. I'm not going to lie to you. This is what you got to be able to do uh, and do it well. So if I'm looking at this, uh, 3 plus 5, you're tempted. Some people say that's 8. It, nope, you can't do it. Order of operations says I got to do. That's like a little dot here. Multiplication first. So you got to follow order of operations and you got to distribute. So I'm looking at bring the 3 down plus 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. And then we have these properties for a reason. I could change the order and say it's 5x plus 3 minus 40. So now I have these numbers right by each other. Uh, and you can say 5x minus 37. So I actually really used a property. I used a commutative property there to put them together to combine like terms. Now some people can go straight from here to here. Totally cool with that as long as you get the right answer. Uh, but if this is tricky for you, you may want to just group things together uh, and use this, these properties. Awesome. Let's do the next one because I want you to see this. Uh, here it is. This is 2h minus 4 times this quantity. So I definitely, this is the multiplication. I got to start there. Well, first I start in the parentheses. Can't do it. Cannot combine like terms. So I need to distribute this 4, but be careful. It's a negative 4. Cannot stress that enough. The negative comes with it. You must distribute the negative with this. So you're going to have 2h, just bring it down, minus 4 times 3 is a minus 12h. Negative 4 times a negative 7. Uh, is positive 28. Here I don't have to flip any order because they're h, h number. So just be careful the signs 2h minus 12h. Be very, very careful when you combine these like terms with your signs. And I'm looking at negative 10h plus 28. What I like to do is next four on your own. Pause them, try them, and then hit play and see how you did. Good luck. All right, here we go. Check out these answers. Go through and grade them and see how you did. Hopefully you remembered your negative signs uh, and distribute the negatives. If they don't match, look at my work. See if you can find your mistake. If you got these right, you are golden. If not, don't worry, we have plenty of time to practice this. I threw a little fraction here. If you can do fractions uh, without writing it down, that's cool, but I wrote it down. I actually showed 2 thirds times 3x so I could see the cancellation happening. Uh, remember, you multiply across the top and across the bottom. So really, 3 over x is like 3x over 1. You could say 2 times 3x is 6x. Divide by 3, you get to that 2x. So, uh, there is going to be fractions in there. Make sure you get a little practice on that. And let's end this with a proof. Uh, let's prove this bad boy. Let's just do it together. That's the last one. Um, so I want to prove these two are equal to each other. Did my quantity change here? Did my grouping symbol change? No, the order did. So it's just the commutative property of multiplication if you want to go for it. Uh, which you have to. And then what happened here? That's right. Well, let's use that new property. That's why I have it. You've got the distributive property. So I actually distributed the two to both of those terms right there and proven. Excellent. Uh, so this is a tricky one. I'm not going to lie to you. People uh, can spend some time on this master check. So do the practice. If it's not enough, do the correct assignment. If that's not enough, ask your teacher for more. Make sure you uh, can really hammer out this distributive property. Good luck. Peace out.